Hey everybody and welcome back. This is episode number 22 of the Future Solutions Fence and Outdoor Clip of the Day podcast. My name's Dave Gatto and I'm your host. Hey guys, what I want to talk about in this episode is really, really important. Please listen up, guys. Listen to this episode all the way through. I'm going to try to pass some information on to you that can save you a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of problems. And yes, guys, I'm speaking from experience with this. This stuff has happened to me before, and I've actually been through this in business. And what I'm talking about is I'm talking about how to protect your company against intellectual theft. And you might say, oh, intellectual intellectual theft, what is that? Is that some cyber stuff? I'm not really worried about that. But I'm going to tell you something. You will be really worried about that when you fire a key a team member and they take with them your customer client base. They take with them very sensitive data. They take with them vendor lists. They take with them trade secrets. Maybe you're developing products and research and development and you're coming out with patents and they start spilling that stuff to your competitors, etc. Things like that. Things that will damage your company, that will equate to a lot of money, a lot of headaches, a lot of lawyers, and then also a lot of animosity between you and that person. So how do we protect ourselves? The first thing that you do, guys, is you have this stuff in your employee handbook. If you do not have an employee handbook, I highly suggest that you get one written. You can get one written on Rocket Lawyer, very, very cheap. They're actually very good. Or you can actually hire somebody that's in that field that does that type of work. It will come, an employee handbook will come in handy and be used in ways in which you never suspected. It's very, very important. So step one is to get the employee handbook. Step two is to have in there a non-compete. So in the non-compete, you're basically agreeing with the person that you're hiring and they're signing this that they are not allowed to work for one of your competitors or in your industry under any capacity for a set amount of time. It might be six months, might be a year, might be a year and a half. I'm not sure if there's limits on that stuff, guys, but I know that you can put it in there. You definitely do not want them going to work for one of your competitors. So have that in there, the non-compete. The next stuff, the next thing that you need in there is a non-disclosure. All right, you need a non-disclosure agreement, them agreeing not to disclose any sensitive information or company information to somebody else, especially to a competitor. And you need a confidentiality agreement that they're going to hold this stuff in confidence. Now, guys, do people follow this stuff? Heck no. It happens all the time, especially in my industry. I'm sure you guys know about it. I'm sure you guys got the call from a salesman who was working for such and such before selling you products or materials. And then the next thing you know, they're calling you, asking you if you need more materials. But by the way, I'm working for such and such now. And I know that you were just working for this company not even three months ago. So we know you're violating. So it does happen all the time, guys, and it's very damaging. So have those three things in place and have them signed. So if you do terminate a team member, you can immediately get a hold of an attorney and you can have them put a cease and desist or an injunction on them to stop them doing for what they're doing until there's a court hearing. So there is legal recourse that you can have in the place. Now, if you don't have this stuff in place, there is no legal recourse. And why wouldn't a competitor want to hire somebody from another company, especially if they were in key management and they had access to a lot of sensitive data. So protect yourself by all means. It could equate to a lot of dollars, guys, a lot of trouble and a lot of animosity. So have those things in there. So the next thing is to have company issue cell phones, tablets, emails, and what if they're on bidding software, guys, you want all this to be on a platform. So when something happens and a team member and you say, hey, listen, you're no longer working for us. We're going to need your company cell phone. We're going to need your company tablet, whatever it might be. And I'm going to need that ASAP, right? Now, 
they might not give it back, right? They might download all the information off their cell phone and keep all their company contacts. I had that happen, and I'm actually in a court battle, going into a court battle over something like that, okay? But what you're able to do if the employee or the team member is irate, I'm able to go on the computer, and which I did, and hit a button and blue screen their cell phone and erase the data on it. And the same thing with their Microsoft Surface Pro, okay? Because it's all on a company platform. Then you can check boxes, guys. You can kick them out of the company email. You could kick them out of the company CRM. You could kick them out of the quoting software. And you can get those records, guys, to try to, because it's a big mess when you have to get rid of a team member. And there was all kinds of special orders going on, all kinds of things. There was a bunch of clients. There was a bunch of different stuff, agreements going on. It could be a really big mess, guys. And you want to protect yourself against that. So you want to be able to shut everything down, recuperate it. And then if they do decide to go work for a competitor, you want to definitely have recourse to go after that person, guys. And the reason I'm telling you this story is because this stuff happened to me, guys, and it costed me a lot of money, and I went through a lot of problems and a lot of stress in dealing with this, even after having all this stuff in place. But I had a leg to stand on, and I did have recourse that I could take. So, guys, get that stuff in your employee handbook. Get those company phones, those company emails, those company tablets. Keep all that stuff together. And really important, guys, limit the access that team members have to key sensitive information. If they do not need to know something, do not tell them. Do not allow people access to your vendor lists that don't need to know about it. Do not let them have access to customer client bases if they have no reason to contact those customers. Do not let them on your QuickBooks. Do Have a login for that. If you have, have people all willy-nilly invoicing people and everybody could be logged onto it, that can create some really big problems, okay? Don't let them have a gas card or a company credit card if they don't need one. Things like that, guys. Limit their information. Limit their access. Protect yourself. That's all I got for this episode, guys. That was episode number 22. I'm only asking one thing. If you got something out of this, please like it. Please share it and subscribe to this channel. See you, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I've been talking about right here. No doubt. Future solutions. Future solutions. 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 Solutions.